Yes, separate and apart from the $10 billion innovation fund for NIH, there's an additional $550 million that goes to FDA for similar type purposes. In other words, to try to do research and more innovation, um, you know, specifically with, with drugs and medical devices. And, um, and um, I've, the, uh, I mean, that's important because, again, the FDA has also had cuts. With sequestration, almost everything has been cut across the board the last few years. One, a big part of, of the 21st century cures is, um, is basically trying to, I use this term streamline, I don't know if that's the right word, uh, the drug approval process. Um, you know, I, I, I know that that always worries someone, be, or medical device probably, because they say, well, does that mean the process isn't working? No, the process is working. I mean, look, we, we call, we say the FDA is the gold standard. We, I was in, um, at the European Union about a month ago, you know, talking to the health people, the equivalent of the FDA in the European Union in Brussels. And, you know, we're the gold standard. We're, we're, the, we're the most rigorous process there is uh, for both drugs and medical devices. And I think that there have been some, you know, there are ways that maybe you can streamline that without uh, limiting effectiveness. Uh, you know, for example, when I talked about ALS, uh, you know, in the ALS walk here in Long Branch a few weeks ago, a lot of what they were talking about was if there's some ways to do clinical trials in a little more expedited fashion. Well, they, of course, would like to see more clinical trials as well. And I think that that can be done without, um, without uh, affecting the gold standard, so to speak.